Stefan, I'm always so impressed and excited when my physics friends talk about beauty in their discoveries, their equations. Uh, how do you see beauty in physics? Ooh, well, um, I am a, 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 a big music lover. Um, and, you know, I've um, played um, the saxophone, the jazz, oh. I'm a jazz musician. I've been playing for like 23 years. Wow. And uh, I'm, so I'm a student of, of, um, of music. Um, and in, in a lot of ways, I see physics as, I mean, in some ways, musical. Okay. Oh. Um, actually, there was a time when I wanted to, I, I really, I, I didn't know physics was a thing for me. Um, it, it, graduate school has its challenges, yeah. and I didn't know if I had what it took. Yeah. So actually, I, I decided to leave when I decided to leave. And right before I was leaving, I had to pack my books, take my books from my, off, from my desk, and I noticed somebody else's book. As before I left, I opened a book up, and it was a book on quantum field theory, a class that I had not taken yet. Oh. Okay, then opened a book, and it, and it said, quantum field theory is, a, is, is the paradigm of all physics. And this was the preface of the book. Yeah. And, and it basically said, all of matter, not only, the, not only the forces, but matter itself, are all unified under the principle of vibration. That all these things are nothing more than a vibrational pattern, like an orchestra. And this is kind of effectively what this book was saying. I was like, wait a minute. So <laughs> physics is about music. It's about harmonies and orchestra, literally, yeah. Yeah. like waves. Yeah. And um, because I knew a little thing about music, you know, about music theory. So I was like, wait, wait. not only I can I, I mean, so if I learn quantum field theory, then I can learn some things about music. Or I can think about music in terms of quantum quantum field theory. Let this be my little secret. So I, I actually took a quantum field theory class. And um, everything changed, <laughs> and I remained. And, and, and it's amazing that um, that was, um, you know, that was 14 years ago or something like that. Um, so <clears throat> that, that I've been doing quantum field theory, and, and trying so, to learn it. And so you see the same I principles. See the, see same. the same principles, are very similar principles between yeah. music and quantum field theory. Yeah, let's talk about some of those principles and, and, and try to uh, color those principles in, with, with words, as hard as it is. So you mentioned one, harmony. Yes. So, so what is harmony in physics and, and what is the analog in music? Well, I mean, you know, if I, um, <clears throat> I play for you, you know, a blues scales, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I, uh, <laughs> ba da 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 ba da ba you know, it's not like, you know, I put, that's a little blues scale for right, me. Right, or, right. you know, pseudo blues scale. I'm not the greatest singer in the world. Yeah. If I had my sax, I'd play a nice blues scale. <laughs> Why does the blues scale sound so funky, right? Why does it sound so cool? Yeah. It's because of the way those notes are related to one another. Right. Or in a sense, the way those vibrations of, say, whether it's the piano or your horn, your guitar, those vibrations have a relationship to one another. We hear those relationships mm. and we find them pleasing. It affects us. Right, and we, don't, right. we don't know why, but it just does. Quantum field theory is saying that matter is nothing more than a vibrational pattern. And the way different types of matter interact with one another, mm. similar to music, are just relationships of these vibrational patterns. And these relationships um, give you what we observe to be beautiful, or truth, or reality. And I find that to be really cool. Well, that, that is, that's amazing. So it's the same reason why musical harmonies and those vibrations are pleasing to us when they fit together properly in a description of matter and forces, the, the beauty of that is that they, they're real and that they work. That's right. And there's also dissonance. I mean, there, there, there are notes that actually sound um, displeasing to us. Right. Um, you know, and like, um, so same thing in, in, in physics. Some things, some relationships, um, you know, you might get an explosion or something. <laughs> I, mean, I don't like that really sometimes. Yeah, um, yeah. And, then, um, and then in, in, in physics sometimes we have where a perfect symmetry all the time is, is so perfect that it's almost imperfect and you have to break a symmetry. That's right, that's right. And sometimes maybe in music it's the same thing. Something odd or something different adds a, a creative or something. That's right. It was a great story about that. I mean, the, uh, you, you remind me of this story. One time I used to hang out in this, um, when I wanted to run away from physics, I, I used to go to this music store uh, yeah. when I was at Brown in downtown Providence. And I found myself in the basement. It was like this dark basement 
um, looking at some books. I was really into Coltrane, the music of Coltrane. I was looking for some music books uh -huh. of his scores. And out of nowhere, there was this voice out of the void. <laughs> it turned out to be this song. And the, the voice was, young man, there are three things you need to know about music. Music is about tension and release. Music is about you learn the rules and then before you break them. Uh -huh. So it's about breaking the rules yeah. and practice, practice, practice. <laughs> and then I, I look around and see, and it turned out it was this, this, old, this old man who was a composer. Oh. And, um, and, and that, that, was, that was great. I was like, oh, so you mean I have to learn, you know, it's, it's about breaking the rules as much as it is learning the rules. Interesting. Um, and Interesting. Following the rules strictly. Yeah. Got to break it sometime. That's fast. So, well, let's just see how, how, how it works in physics, so e each, of, each of those Each rules. of those elements. Yeah. Well, the first thing about, you know, <clears throat> um, breaking the rules. Mm. You know, if nature was just completely following the rules, I don't think anything interesting would happen. Mm. Be because, you see, what, one of the things that we've understood, we've come to understand about how nature works when we look at how three, like, say, we, we know we, there, are only, there, are only, there are only four forces in nature. Three of these forces have been unified into one framework. Right. And they're unified under a principle of symmetry. All these forces are just related to each other by some sort of symmetry. Like a rotational, like, you know, being, imagine you lived on a sphere, on a ball. Any point on that ball is no more special than any other right, point. Right. So they're... All these forces are just different points on that sphere, on mm, that ball, mm, mm. okay? The, so, but we know, we experience in the real world, um, you know, three of these forces to be completely different things. So that symmetry had to be broken. If nature was completely following the strict rules of symmetry, nothing interesting would happen. Yeah. Somehow those symmetries had to be very interestingly broken, broken in a nice, in an interesting way. Yeah. Um, in a way where you're also, nature has managed to master her own rules, but also break them in interesting ways. So, same applies in music. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's a direct analogy in music. That's a really, direct analogy. Yeah. The second thing, um, um, practice, practice, practice. But when you get out there, um, you know, throw the rules away. <laughs> This is, this is a tough one. This has been a tough one. It's been a tough one to actually even um, embody, but to also get across now that I'm, you know, I teach and um, I advise students um, because there, you have to, there is this balance between really mastering and, try, and struggling to learn the vocabulary, to learn the mathematics, to really learn the, you know, your, your techniques, your craft, like any, any um, professional sure, will do sure. in their respective field. I have to, that is a constant, ongoing process and, and, and struggle and something that I actually enjoy. That's, I love yeah, learning, yeah. learning my craft. But to really do something new, to really create and really just make a discovery, involves some sort of improvisation. I mean, going beyond what going you've beyond practiced, that. going, going beyond, beyond that your craft, as going beyond the craft. Yeah. Um, somehow you have to let go of that. Mm. Um, that has to have its place. You, you, and so that, that, that striking that balance, I find to be a lot of fun. It's like being on stage and having to improvise based on how certain chords and scales are moving in real time. You have to be able to nail. And, but do something fresh and new so that the audience is like, wow, that's new. But you couldn't do that if you hadn't practiced your craft in both music and physics. You have to know what others have done really well before you can then improvise. I strongly believe that, yes. You really have to learn this. You learn your craft, um, but when you, when, you, when, when you get on the stage of discovery, when you get on, you know, you, you, you have to, in a sense, let, let it go, let it take its place. Yeah. Um, let it let it let it come out of you naturally. You can't force it. And is that happening in your physics research? I mean, do you find that that the same thing happening? It rarely happens, but it does happen. And when it happens, it's incredible. Huh. You know, um, you, you you something comes together. Um, but it's actually in that moment where you've totally given in, um, 
and then you, you, you might see something, but then you have the skills and the techniques to um, execute that insight and that idea. Yeah. So in those moments, rare as they are, how do you feel? Um, I feel like, um, I feel completely, um, pardon my French, I feel completely high. Um, and in the state of, of, of wonderment, I don't know if that's a, a, good, a good word, but, sure, um, sure. but that's, that's, just feels great. And how would you compare those instances in physics when you've had those great insights, as rare as they are, with your experience as a, as, as a jazz player when, you, when you're able to improvise? I mean, are the feelings similar? Oh yeah, that's actually, yeah, so the feelings are extremely similar. In fact, every now and then, I mean, jazz is a big hobby of mine. Uh, every now and then I do get out and I play. And sometimes I, I, I like to imp, you know, do a lot of improvisation. And every now and then I'm playing, I'm simultaneously listening to myself and, right. and creating something. Right. And every now and then I hear, and I say to myself, wait a minute, did I do that? Yeah. And it, it's sort of that, that, that whimsical moment where I'm just like, you know, I did that, who did that? Is that, is right. that sort of, it's you know, so, very so, zen in that way. Yeah, and you're outside yeah. of yourself, watching yourself and experiencing it, 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 it simultaneously. Yeah, it's just like, wow, you know, who came up with that? You know? <laughs> that was cool. That sounded good. There's no way I could have done that. <laughs>